on, off, on, off, on, off, on. Pretty cool, right? I wanted to give you a quick demo of what the end product of this video will be before I talk about the Raspberry Pi giveaway winners. Unlike previous videos, this will be a full walkthrough step by step because everything you need to know has been taught in previous videos. This video will just be showing you how I implemented this project. You can get more information on easyprogramming.net where I link to the previous tutorials that will help you. You can also look on my GitHub where all the videos are there as well as the front end and the back end files that I used. So now let's get to the winners. So I'll be using the winner picker to pick the two winners. Um, unfortunately I was not able to get my hands on a third Raspberry Pi but I'll be giving away the two that I showed in the last video. Uh, don't worry this won't be my last giveaway so I'll do submit. Um, congratulations to Sage Vibe and David L. Uh, I will be reaching out to you shortly to ask you for uh, a name and address that I can send this to. Congratulations. Uh, again, don't worry, this won't be my last giveaway. If you didn't win, do subscribe and come back for more. Uh, but before I do take you to the video, I want to mention that I am going on hiatus from making videos for a little bit because I'm planning on moving over the summer. But I'll still be active online, so if you have questions or concerns or you need anything from me, I will be more than happy to answer, so do, do ask those questions. I just won't be publishing a new video uh, for a little while until I settle in and uh, all my equipment is set up again. Congratulations to the winners. Thank you all for entering and enjoy the video. Hey there, welcome to today's Raspberry Pi tutorial where we'll combine everything we've learned in the past few tutorials and turn on and off an LED using just our browser. So before I go over what's on this page, uh, just, just a few buttons to turn on our red LEDs like we did in the past, uh, I want to take show you the uh, the github repository that I created which has uh, some basic steps and some prerequisites if you are unfamiliar with all the technology that I'm using in this tutorial I'm gonna I'm not going to go through step by step on how to do all of these steps because I've done them in the past few tutorials instead I'll show you my implementation and you can use this video as a, a, a guide to your setup and you can use this repository to either you can either clone it or you can use this as um, just information for your own setup so um, there are well, what I created here, just a, a front end and a back end application. The front end is just an index HTML page uh, with a script.js, JavaScript has jQuery in it for the Ajax calls and a simple style sheet. Um, and the back end is the LED, which is a Flask application. It's literally just one file, one Python file with 10 lines of code maybe and uh, a WSGI file so that we can run this behind Apache. Prerequisites you would need to know is I would recommend looking at them if you are unfamiliar with any of these, uh, which is how to set up a Raspberry Pi in headless mode, how to use the rpi.gpio library to turn on an LED, running Apache, running Flask, running Flask behind Apache, and a and an old tutorial where I showed you how to uh, do a simple get call using uh, jQuery. And we'll be using just get, not post. Uh, we're not writing anything, so uh, it's not needed. So it'll be just a simple get call. So I would do recommend checking them out if you are not familiar with any of these. Uh, other thing I'll mention is that when you run Flask uh, and you want Flask to be able to use the rpi.gpio library, uh, rpi.gpio is installed globally in Raspberry Pi. However, if you are using a virtual environment, your virtual environment will not have access to the package uh, that's run globally. So after you activate your virtual environment, just run pip3 install rpi.gpio and it'll install uh, this package locally for your virtual environment and you'll be able to run. So if you run into issues saying, hey, can't find this library or package, run this and it'll be okay. Um, configuration, so we need to worry about that. I did uh, include in the utils directory uh, a configuration file for the Apache. Uh, this is familiar, similar to what we had before, just a virtual host. Um, uh, this needs to be changed, this is a typo, so you should say slash LED, but uh, I'll fix that before uh, we go over this. So this is just a, a basic um, uh, how to set up Flask behind Apache that I covered in this tutorial here. And after you uh, uh, create a new virtual host, you can enable it using sudo uh, a2 and insight um, 
patch LED if you want to call it anything else you can. Uh, someone did mention in the last tutorial not to use sudo everywhere. So with the Raspberry Pi, I noticed that uh, the user Pi doesn't have a lot of permissions. So unless you do sudo, a lot of things don't work, including this command. But if you have any idea of how to give Pi access, uh, do share. I'm, I'm more than happy to uh, make those changes to my tutorials and the way I do things. And if everything works correctly, you'll be able to just access your Raspberry Pi's IP address and we use this application. So I'm just going to take you through the implementation really quickly. Um, so I installed it in... So in our um, HTML folder, we have just our index script and style CSS. I'll do this, maybe it's easier to see here like this. If I go back one and list, I can see my Pi app that we did in the last tutorial and the LED that I created this time. And it has just uh, our virtual environment, our LED.py, which is our uh, our Flask application, and LED.wsgi, which is just our WGI uh, configuration that is used by Apache. So if I do um, nano LED WSGI, we can see uh, that we are using the activate this uh, script that I did go over last time and where and it's importing the uh, the LED app as LED and if I do nano pi uh, we can see that it's just a basic flask application so I'm just going to go over that here it's, I think it's a little bit easier to read uh, zoom in so we are importing Flask request and JSONify because I want to return a message saying LED was successfully turned on or if it doesn't work, you know, not a valid status. Uh, most of this is pretty, uh, pretty simple. So I do recommend going through the Flask documentation to know, uh, you know, to uh, learn how the controllers actually work. Um, you're only using the get method, and I'm looking for a a, a command. Uh, query parameter in the URL called status. So once uh, someone hits the URL slash LED uh, question mark status equals to on, it'll turn the light on. If it's off, it'll turn it off. And if it doesn't get anything, it'll just say not a valid status. So we'll actually hit the uh, the IP address in a second. I'm just gonna pull this over here. So uh, as we can see that when I hit the off, uh, you know, the LED is off, you can see in the corner here, and uh, it says LED successfully off. So if I change the query parameter to on, it turns on. And if I go back to off, it turns off. It's it's pretty simple, right? And, and it, the message just changed. And if I don't put anything here, it says not a valid status. And and that's what we want to return. This is a good way to do error checking on, on your side. Um, so let's take a look at the script.js file and see what's actually there. So it's pretty simple. I didn't I didn't do anything too crazy. Uh, I wanted to make it as simple as possible. So I'm just reading the text um, when I'm toggling the, the thing as you'll see and uh, what I'm doing is I'm just sending a, a get message you know um, LED status on off uh, I, I guess I should talk about this so the, one of the reasons I wanted to set up class behind Apache is so that uh, from my website here when I do this I don't want it to go to um, like for example uh, 1070 5000 LED uh, that's because to a browser this is a com different site from this even though they're the same main domain uh, the port number makes it a different different site so if I had that open I would still be able to run it if I use something called cores if I enabled cores I do have this plugin where which I use to test but it's not safe it's not recommended there are of course of course other ways to that you could have done all of this instead of setting up a uh, an HTML site you could have uh, created a, a templates using uh, your your flask app which which is available uh, I, I believe it uses Jinja uh, but I want to keep it a little bit simple just a basic HTML site script .js and um, CSS nothing nothing too complicated at all and so you can read through this if you have questions on any of this do ask me uh, I'm more than happy to answer and help you on your way to controlling your LEDs so I'm here right I'm gonna refresh this uh, make sure everything works right loaded pretty pretty easily so I'm just gonna clear this and see what you can see so take a look at the uh, the the corner with the LED if I click turn on it turns on and you'll see that I get a return message saying a JSON saying LED successfully turned on and I can see exactly what uh, it called um, let me zoom in a little bit more if I turn off it sends an off message saying turned off on off on off it's pretty pretty quick right 
Now if I go to the toggle, it's doing something similar. I wanted to, it's turning on the exact same light. I could have wired it differently, but I didn't want to, just to show that you can get creative with the way you control your lights. So turned on, you know, I, I, it's, it's, a, it's a dark button because it's turned off. If I click on turn on, it turns into a light button and it says LED successfully turned on and it turns on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Of course, if I turn this on and I refresh and it goes back to on because I'm, I'm not persisting the data anywhere. Um, if you want to do that, you can write at the on status into a file or into a database and you can read it every time the page refreshes, which I actually do in my other actual home implementation. So if I click on off, it does turn off. Um, if we go to the network tab here, we can see exactly what's happening. So these are uh, Ajax requests, so let me turn this off and turn this on and off. You can see that it's pr pretty fast, 20, 45 milliseconds, 60 milliseconds. It depends on your home network. Pretty cool, right? Uh, and you can, there are a lot of applications that you can you can do with this. You can turn on LED strips um, and, and and so much more. Um, so uh, as I mentioned in, in the uh, in the beginning of the video, I am going to be taking a hiatus from making new tutorials because I do plan on moving uh, over the summer. So I'll be packing up a lot of my stuff, but I will still be active. If you have questions, do ask me. I'm more than happy to answer. And when I come back, I will hopefully bring you more tutorials, uh, including how to turn on a relay and use the transistors to control um, LED strips, including uh, RGB LED strips, which you've seen in uh, some of my demo videos uh, over a year ago. Well, thanks for watching. Do visit easyprogramming.net for more tutorials, more information. Congratulations to all of the Raspberry Pi winners. I'll be back with more giveaways as well. Have a great one.